Bronny James is one of the most polarizing second round prospects ever. After a less than fortunate season at USC, Bronny James did a great job testing at the NBA Combine, leaving fans excited to see more of his game. But we've got to take a look at what he did in his one year at USC, however unfortunate the situation may have been. So in this video, I'm finally breaking down the film of Bronny James for you. I know I tried looking around on the internet for those clickbaity videos talking about him. Not a single one of them actually had any film of him. So we're actually going to take a look at what Bronny was doing at USC, the highlights, the lowlights, where he can improve and how he can translate to the NBA. Starting it off, we're looking at his NBA Draft Combine three-point shooting, where he went 19 of 25 in the star drill. I think he went 19 of 25 in another three-point shooting drill, which is really impressive. But we actually got to take a look at his game. We're also going to look at his Combine highlights. For starters, Bronny James is a 6-2-6-3 combo guard with a 6-7 wingspan, which is most comparable to the physical profile of Gary Harris coming out of college per Draft Express's player comparison thing that they do and his strengths are his clear NBA athleticism and he shows flashes on the defensive end with passing a little bit of on ball creation and a little bit of three point shooting off the catch but a lot of the skills were sometimes weaknesses for him during the year he also shows some skill in the pick and roll knocking down a few floaters and making some good passes inside like you'll see in this tape right here but I'll break down more of that once we get to the USC film. Timestamps for skipping around are in the video player or in the description, and if you enjoy content like this, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. One final note that we have to mention before getting into the tape is that Bronny James was in an awful situation. USC was a team that was falling apart after they brought in a team that clearly should have been a top four seed in the NCAA tournaments. They had a losing record this season, and Bronny James is not a large reason why this happens. This team was a mess, and Bronny James's health issues really added on to his struggles to get involved with this team and have a consistent role, be uh, even like a great contributing player because he missed five months of practice and wasn't accustomed to the scheme on a team that was already falling apart. But still, Bronny James' brightest flashes might even be good enough to get him into the first round. If you ignore a lot of the downsides, he really does look good on the tape, as we'll see in this video. But we'll talk about his exact draft position at the end of the video. And for now, let's start taking a look at Bronny James at USC, starting off with his amazing NBA athleticism. This man just was jumping over players at USC, showing off a really quick burst and some great hops to get up there, grab that oop from Isaiah Collier and finish with through contact and draw the and one. Although his athleticism might not be at the top of the league, a 41 and a half inch vertical is certainly not going to be hurting Bronny James as he really has some functional athleticism that pops off the page and his brightest moments at USC. That athleticism also helps him on the defensive end, where he can sprint back and get a chase down block like he did in his first ever game in a USC uniform against Long Beach State. Chasing down that block, very akin to his father. It was great to see, and yeah, Brownie's got a little bit of that shot blocking timing in him. I'd like to see a little bit more of it, but this is a pretty great highlight for your first college game. Ronnie's speed helps him get away in transition, getting the steal right here against Oregon State, and finishing with the dunk on the other end. He is a really effective player in transition, and this is the transition portion of the video where Ronnie James does a great job of creating opportunities in transition, whether it's through stealing the ball or collecting a defensive rebound and pushing it, getting it down the floor, and making things happen on the offensive end. Here's another clip of him stealing the ball, lurking in the passing lanes, taking it away from ASU. And then here's them throwing down a dunk from Isaiah Collier. And uh, yeah, that duo should have been really great, but they were derailed by some injuries and by some just pure chaos with this team. Should have been a great combination between the number one overall recruit and Bronny James this year, but... Sadly, we did not get the opportunity to see that at their best. 
Here's another clip of Bronny using his elite speed, stealing the ball away and finishing through contact in transition. As we get into Bronny James finishing through contact, this man really embraces contact and uses his 210 pounds. He has listed that already coming into USC and has maintained that weight through the draft combine. And he uses that strength and size to push through and finish through contact a lot, very akin to his father. And against NBA defenders, he is going to struggle a bit more against uh, much better defenders than he was facing in the Pac-12. His passing and transition was also a major plus as he made some great passes over the top of defenders, feeding the ball through like a quarterback to wide open receivers on the other end to finish uh, the layups or sometimes miss them because he's playing for USC and they, uh, they just weren't great, man. He has a lot of issues with this team. Another thing that I noticed is that Bronny knocked down a few threes in transition. He's got pretty good balance and is able to hit that three catch and shoot. Uh, even if he's coming off of a run, he's getting on balance and knocking down the shot, which is certainly something you have to do to survive in the NBA. And I'm sure he's been working on that since his injury. He's got a lot of offseason time to get better, as we saw at the draft combine. Now let's start taking a look at Bronny James's half court game. And we'll continue with the three point shooting off the catch. As he knocked on quite a few threes off the catch, he did only shoot 26.7% from three during the year, but that shot looks pretty good and it seems to improved a lot, at least from what we saw in the draft combine. And many of the threes in this footage are from the NBA line, suggesting that even from before the season, he was practicing shooting from the NBA line instead of the college line, which is probably a good thing for his long-term shooting ability. We're also gonna take a look at his shooting off the dribble as he also knocked down quite a few threes, highlighted by that big three against University of Arizona. That was a pretty crazy three that he just hit that going right into halftime. He hit a few more against Oregon and Oregon State off the dribble. Those are some pretty nice moves and it looks like he's had a lot of practice getting into his shot from off the dribble and off of handoffs. And also a little nice size up three that he hit in the face of the defender who gave him too much space because, you know, the scouting report was saying to give him some space considering his 27% three-point shooting. But it wasn't all positive shooting the three for Bronny as he missed many more threes than he made this season. And that Arizona one is a particularly bad one considering the previous possession he just airballed the three, then took one off the dribble, down nine that clanked against the front of the rim. One of the more interesting aspects of Bronny James's game is getting to his mid-range shot, which I'm not the most confident in because if he's not shooting a high percentage, most teams will just tell him to stop shooting the ball, but he seems to like to go to it during the year, and that's what he showed off during the draft combine, so we'll see if that's a sticking point in the league. I'm not really confident yet that it will be. But sometimes that mid-range shot making hurts because right there, he gets double teamed with a guy helping in the paint and just takes the shot. It's a horrible shot. There's time on the shot clock to pass the ball and it ends up being a turnover and a bucket on the other end because that is a horrible shot. We need him to cut down on those poor shot making decisions for the NBA. But Bronny does provide the benefit that he is a pretty good passer off the dribble right here making a nice inside pass. He's got some really great bigs to work with here at USC that kind of prepared him for the NBA. He probably would have preferred better spacing, but making passes to interior bigs or kicking it out for three were some of his stronger suits during the year. Whether or not those shots went in is a different question, but that's not Brownie's fault. He's making the right passes and uh, is a pretty good look on tape for someone who's gonna be relied upon to play point guard or be a connecting shooting guard who needs to make the right passes at all times when he's on the court. He has a good handle right into the pass as evidenced by that left hand dribble into left hand pass to Morgan I believe and then the second clip against ASU pretty nice pass inside to Iwachuku. I like to see a good post entry pass because it's becoming a lost art and that's a pretty darn good one. However the defense wasn't really set and I would like to see some more post entry passes out of him as he continues his career to see if that's a real skill of his. I like how he stayed on balance in this clip against Stanford, drawing the attention of the defense and then kicking it out for three, which an NBA player will hit. He's definitely a good pick and roll passer, and I like this little jump pass inside to Morgan. Just a really nice dime and showing off that passing ability. Um, jump passes aren't the greatest thing in the world, but at least he did a good job right there. 
and then passing it inside against the big off of the baseline drive. But sometimes he makes some poor errors like this pass to Iwachuku, just horrible lob pass that gets tipped and it's tipped out of bounds by Iwachuku. Then he gets ripped by Frankie Collins who already had four steals. I think he had five steals in this first half against ASU picking on stuff like this from Bronny James. This might have been my least favorite clip of Bronny James as his team creates advantage off of the double team and immediately passes out of advantage and squanders any chance of USC scoring on this play as he sometimes makes poor decisions driving the basketball like right here against the only NBA ready talent he faced this year Cody Williams getting squatted and Cody Williams will also get him on the offensive end like we'll see later and here's another poor drive against Colorado which ended up being a fast break opportunity which they scored on because Bronny James is on the other end of the floor on the ground. I thought that was Mason Gillis out there shooting the three in a black and gold jersey, but uh, no, I actually don't know who that is. Anyways, the next clip is one of the worst moments of Bronny James' this season, as he gets forced to a 10 second violation right at the start of the second half, you're only a minute and a half in, and he somehow ends up getting forced to a shot clock violation by Jemiah Neal. That's not great man, that's not great. At least he can make up for some offensive mistakes by fighting on the offensive glass, controlling rebounds, and making passes to his bigs, or even taking it himself inside and finishing over and through contact like he did against U of A. He needs that energy to really survive in the NBA and it's one of his biggest question points for me. Bronny is alright moving without the basketball, sometimes he's pretty weak on his cuts which you don't like to see, but I like this little brush screen that he ran that helped open up Isaiah Collier for three right here. Sometimes his indecisiveness shines through, like this clip against U of A where he can't decide to set a flare screen or if he should slip to the basket, and therefore just nothing is created off of his action because U of A is just able to switch it. Now we're moving on to one of Bronny James' stronger suits, blocking shots one on one against some of the less athletic, less talented guards in the Pac-12. He did this quite a bit taking shots away and I think he will continue to develop and do this in the G League and in the NBA. Uh, he really has a knack for it and using his length and his size to be able to uh, keep guards out of the paint and if they get in the paint use his wingspan to block shots. He's not the greatest at getting around screens but he does a good job of trying to get back in front or blocking the shot from behind which is definitely very valuable in the NBA as evidenced by players like Drew Holiday and Matisse Thibel. I like seeing that jump switch against U of A to help force the turnover off the charge, and then him getting back to recover and block the shot against the shooter late in that game against Stanford. I also liked his IQ here, doubling the ball, taking it away, and creating an offensive transition opportunity which USC scored off of. But as I mentioned, this man got cooked by Cody Williams, the best NBA talent that he faced this season, really just cooked him on the ball, drawing the foul first, and then finishing against Bronny James, who's just not big enough to stop Cody Williams, who's listed at 6667, and maybe won't be an NBA matchup, but is an NBA type talent, which Bronny struggled against. The rest of the tape is an unfortunate low light reel of Bronny James's season, Full of defensive mistakes, lack of effort, not getting back in transition, just overall any negatives that I saw in the five or six games that I fully watched. And for now, I'm going to get into the outro as this plays out on the screen. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the defensive mistakes he made, go ahead and ask me in the comment section. I'll, I'll answer them for you. But let's talk about Brownie James. Where is he going to get drafted? Who's going to draft him? Well, I think there's a chance he goes at pick number 30, and it's going to be the Los Angeles Lakers trading in to make that pick. I think that Rich Paul can really push some pressure onto the Lakers for trade for a first round pick to give him a guaranteed four year contract uh, to play with the team, or at least the two plus two that first round picks get. And if not, it's going to be one of uh, four teams that draft him, whether it be the Lakers, Timberwolves, Mavericks or Raptors that end up drafting him. The Raptors could draft him as early as 31, but he could go anywhere in the second rounds because teams trade for picks all the time and any of those teams could take him at any time. I do think the most likely case is that he ends up on the Lakers and it's a first round pick or a second round pick because Rich Paul makes a big deal about drafting players to full contracts. 
How that's going to play out with the Lakers, I don't want to even begin to predict. But for any other team, expect Bronny to be a uh, G League type of guy because, as a lot of people have said, he really needed another year in college. He needed to get more acclimated to his system and just develop more as a player. And this was just a horrible situation. Uh, any other player would not have been a one and done in this situation. And yeah, um, he is going to be one and done. We'll see how it plays out in the league. I think his talent wise, he could be a first round pick without the mistakes. But with the mistakes, I still think he is clearly a second round pick. His story is really similar to Peyton Watson, who struggled on a very bad UCLA team and could barely find any minutes. But Peyton Watson still ended up going pick number 30, and I think it's playing out pretty well with the Nuggets. Another guy who had really not great stats in college, but it's turning out well in the league. But that about covers it for this video. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed and made it all the way to the end, maybe scroll down and hit the subscribe button, that would be pretty cool. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.